So Jurassic World Dominion has now been out for a little while, so I'm here to do my spoiler review of this movie. If you've seen this movie, please leave a comment in the comment section of what you thought of this movie. and Feel free to talk all about spoilers, but I just ask that everybody keep their opinions respectful to others because people are going to have different opinions about this, so don't be attacking each other for having different opinions, please. It's all subjective. Everyone's going to have different feelings about movies. I myself did not like this movie, but I have a close friend who absolutely loved this movie, so keep your opinions respectful to others but just say why you didn't like it or why you did like it so we're going to get into this review and i just apologize first for my voice if i'm not talking too well i've just been feeling a little down lately and not feeling too great voice at times been a little sore so i'm going to try and do this in as few takes as possible so i'm not here too long so I apologize for that. And if you're new here, please do consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It'll help me build a nice little community here on this channel to talk about movies and TV shows. And with that out of the way, let's get into this review. If you're new here, please do like this video and subscribe to my channel. It'll help me build a nice community of people who love movies and TV shows here. So with that out of the way, let's get into talking spoilers of Jurassic World Dominion. So to start, I'm going to start with the positives that I had with this movie and to start it was really good to see the original cast back having Sam Neill as Alan Grant, Laura Dern as Ali Sattler and Jeff Goldblum as Ian Malcolm all back. It was really fun to see them. I had some issues with how they were used to like come back into this movie the reason that they were here but I'll get to that later but just seeing them playing those characters again was great and there's just fun to see them like it pulled at the nostalgia strings as I said in my non-spoiler review so that was great as well there's a lot of good sequences in this movie um, in the final act the sequence with the giganotosaurus I really liked other than just one tiny moment when they have the line that's in the trailer where they say don't move like it's a cool moment but it doesn't really make sense because they say don't move even though it was never established that the giganotosaurus can't see you if you don't move like the t-rex and even after they say that then they run behind a car so they moved so it was like i felt like they just did that scene to put into the trailer but other than that that whole sequence i really liked it was fun exciting a little suspenseful i liked the moment where ian malcolm has that stick with the locust on it that's on fire and he's waving it back and forth like a call back to the original film and then he throws it into the giganotosaurus's throat and it sort of temporarily breathing fire i really like that scene that scene was great there's another scene in the middle of the movie where bryce dallas howard's character is just ejected from a plane is now hang her seats stuck in a tree in the forest and this i believe it's called a thinosinosaurus i probably said that wrong but it's the dinosaur with the big claws i knew of that dinosaur before this movie but that scene i really liked it was very suspenseful it was the dinosaur was blind but she had to remain quiet because although i think it's a vegetarian that dinosaur it will still just like swipe off the head of a deer like that was shown in this movie so she had to remain quiet and hide in the pond as it was could hear her crawling on the ground that that whole scene i really liked as well there's a scene in the middle of the movie when the velociraptor not velociraptors but a type of raptor are chasing chris pratt when he's on the motorcycle and they're chasing bryce Dallas howard's character that was a very exciting scene and when i was watching i was like this feels like it's straight out of the born ultimatum but with raptors and uh, although it feels like it's from the born movie it doesn't mean i dislike it it's just observation i made and there's even a shot that reminds me of when jason born jumped across the balconies into the window there's a shot similar to that with a raptor and bryce Dallas howard's character so that seems very exciting and there's some other suspenseful scenes i like the villain the way he sort of killed off with the dilophosauruses i like that and there's some nice scenes like when you get ali sattler and uh, alan grant together for the first time again that was a nice little scene and there's some gorgeous shots in this movie too there's some very nice looking ones but unfortunately when it comes down to the stories of this movie they kind of let me down so there's to me it felt like like there were multiple different plots going along but there were two main ones both of them i weren't i wasn't very interested in 
One is about the clone girl from the first, or not the first movie, the previous movie. Uh, she's captured by this evil organization or corrupt organization uh, because of, I guess, her genetics of being a clone. But we find out she's not really kind of a clone, but the person she's a clone of is her actual biological mother. It's kind of weird. But this company, this organization needs her to fix something with the locusts. So that's one storyline. They also capture Blue's baby, because Blue has a baby in this, but that's really not focused on when Owen Claire goes searching. They're looking more for that clone girl rather than they name her Delta, the Blue's baby in this. So that I didn't care for. And then that other main plot was with the locusts. So this evil company organization creates these giant locusts that are eating all the crops and I guess the locusts aren't dying off and that's why they need this little girl to fix the way the locusts will die off I, I can't quite remember it's kind of confusing it may make more sense on a second rewatch even though I'm not planning on rewatching it anytime soon but yeah the other main plot is these locusts are eating all these crops except for the ones that are uh, run by the company I think it's called Biosyn that's like the crop company in this so they're eating all those crops and then that's what brings the original cast in so Ellie Sattler's called in when these locusts totally eat their crops of this one person's farm she's called in which kind of makes sense kind of doesn't she's a paleobotanist I believe which means plants and while the plants were eaten, it focuses more on insects, not plants. So that was a little okay. And then she recruits Alan Grant just because people trust him, trust what he would say. And she gets him to go into Biosyn to collect a sample of these locusts to prove that they're the same as the ones that are eating all these crops. Now, I wasn't a fan of this because that whole storyline it just felt like having alan grant well it was cool to see him he wasn't able to be alan grant fully because he's a dinosaur guy he knows about dinosaurs but this plot's focusing on giant insects the locusts so that was like eh, wasn't a fan of that and then jeff goldblum's character in malcolm is at biasin as their what was he? It was he's just there to talk to the younger people to I guess inspire them. He started talking about chaos again. So he was there and he was the one who told Ellie Sattler about what was going on, gets them in, gives them the pass to sneak in to get the Yeah, get the sample. So yeah, that was fine. They have him cracking a lot of jokes. Some work, some felt flat for me uh, especially some of them were in moments where the scenes were supposed to be like intense and suspenseful but then he's cracking jokes and it diminishes it in my opinion but there's some good ones like when chris pratt's character says oh i have to get this baby raptor and made a promise to her mother and he's like you made a promise to a dinosaur that was that was a good line i enjoyed that one but yeah overall it's like it was great seeing these characters back but the reasons they were back didn't totally make sense because Alice Adler and Alan Grant are sneaking into where they shouldn't be in this facility to, you know, get samples, you know, like an espionage type storyline. It's like, yeah, their skill sets that we've seen from the previous movie have nothing to do with this. He's a dinosaur guy. She's a plant person into studying that kind of stuff. So it's like, didn't really make sense. As well, the villain in this, that was kind of cartoony, and I don't know if it was the way he was written or if it was the performance, but it just didn't, it just felt bad. Like, the performance just wasn't great, and I don't know if it was, like, the actor was told to be like that or what. And some of the dialogue was bad, too. Like, I was like, why are they saying this? This doesn't need to be here. So, yeah, that was unfortunate. But also... There's times where it felt like they're going a bit more like a Fast and Furious movie in this, where there'd be things like if you saw Fast 9, there's a scene where like uh, Vin Diesel's character is picked up and goes through like a doorway and his head goes through the, the top of the door. 
and he's completely fine while there's moments like that in this movie where Alan Grant, like the actor's I think in his 70s, so I'm assuming Alan Grant's a similar age. He's on this ladder, this dinosaur jumps out at him, he falls off the ladder, hits his head off a rock, and he's completely fine. And there's another scene later when the original three are together with the little girl and they're in a, like a jeep that rolls down a hill and they're all completely fine. And like some of these characters are probably in their 70s now. So it's like, really? Because that was one thing that I loved about the original Jurassic Park is how grounded it was. This is not grounded at all. And so my biggest issue with this movie is the fact that from the last movie, Fallen Kingdom, and the start of this movie, they had a great idea set up where dinosaurs are living along, sorry, living among people now around the world. It's been four years since the previous movie, so they're growing in numbers. They're all over the place. So this movie should be okay. The This extinct race of dinosaurs is back living along, among humans. Sorry, I've been a little sick lately, so my voice isn't great right now. But so there's the dinosaurs back and these humans. Humans are maybe not anymore, sorry, no longer the top of the food chain because the dinosaurs are back. And some of those dinosaurs can definitely eat people. Plus, it's going to screw up the ecosystem and the food chain further with the rest because everything was already set. It was how it was in the world. And now these extinct species are all back. So. It's screwed up and in the trailer they say oh we created an ecological disaster or something like that and I assume that was to do with the dinosaurs being in the world now because you think that's sort of what would happen because it would change everything but no they said that referring to the locusts which irritated me so that was great it's going to be I thought it's going to be a story about okay can humans and dinosaurs live alongside each other or is it going to be like a Planet of the Apes situation only one can survive so that's what I thought, but then they just sort of tossed that away for these other plots with the Locust and the Clone Girl. I'm like, okay, neither of those plots have actually much to do with dinosaurs. Because if someone said to me, okay, there's this movie that has a plot where these, this uh, organization creates these giant locusts that are eating all the crops except for the ones owned by that organization, and it's going to cause famine around the world, and these people got to stop it, yeah, my mind would not go to a Jurassic Park movie. Nor would it if it's even included a clone girl to fix it. It's like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that would be an Jurassic Park movie because those two plots don't have much to do with dinosaurs. The dinosaurs, well, there's a lot of dinosaur presence in this plot-wise. The dinosaurs are very much in the background, like more so in the, than the previous movies, which I wasn't a fan of because I was like, you had a great idea set up and it would make more sense for the original characters to be there too because Alan Grant's a dinosaur guy. He knows about dinosaurs. He's now seen dinosaurs. He could be there to help to figure out what to do with humans and dinosaurs living with each other. And the other characters, like they've been around dinosaurs in real life now too. Like real life within the context of this franchise. So it would make more sense for them to be in this movie if that was the story. And I'm surprised they didn't go with that. Like like I said, I was sort of surprised that this is the direction they took for this conclusion to this franchise. Because like these two main stories don't have much to do with dinosaurs. Like there is the plot line of Owen, Chris Pratt's character, going to save Delta Blue's baby. But that's very much in the background of this movie. It's not focused on very much. And you get one moment when they finally go to get Delta, where Alan Grant's a getting to be a bit more of his the dinosaur Alan Grant guy where he's talking about oh the raptors always come to you from the sides and stuff but that was just a few seconds of the movie so yeah that I don't know I was just disappointed because it's like it's great to see these guys but it felt so contrived for how they brought them into the movie and it's like the last movie and the Star Wars movie had it set up so well where it's like, you know, your target for what you want to get is right in front of you. If you, if you don't hit the bullseye, you're going to hit the target. They had it lined up and then for no reason, they just went over there and did something completely different that didn't always make much sense. It wasn't very interesting to me because, like I said, it's a Jurassic Park movie or Jurassic World movie. I like to see a plot more focused with the, on the dinosaurs, especially now that they're living all around the world. Not a plot focused on, oh, these giant locusts we created are going to eat all the crops. What are we going to do? Yeah, that 
So that really disappointed me. And then the final battle with the T-Rex and the Giganotosaurus really irritated. I thought they did the T-Rex dirty in this new Jurassic World trilogy because it cannot win a fight without help from another dinosaur. And in this one, it's fighting the Giganotosaurus. I don't think it even lands one bite on it. I could be wrong about that, but I'm not sure if it did it until it got its ass beat. And I was like, okay, this is the same T-Rex from the original Jurassic Park. How is this going to get fans happy seeing it get it? get its ass kicked by the Giganotosaurus because I, I was getting really irritated I want to was not happy with that at all and it's like I get the Giganotosaurus is bigger than T-Rex so you could see it maybe winning but it's not much bigger because I was at a dinosaur thing there at the museum in Toronto the Rom Royal Ontario Museum they had a special exhibit where they brought in a lot of dinosaur fossils and they had a Giganotosaurus and a T-Rex. The Giganotosaurus fossil was 46 feet long. The T-Rex is 42 feet long. So yes, the Giga is bigger, but not significantly bigger than the T-Rex. So I just feel like it should be more even. And I may be getting more nitpicky talking about it wanting to be more realistic or something. Not that I'd actually know how it would turn out in real life. But it was just like... Who wants to see their favorite T-Rex just get the slot beat out of it? No one wants to see that. And then you think it's dead, it's eyes wide open, it's not moving, and then a lightning bolt comes up and the, the pupil dilates, so it's like, okay, it's alive. And the Giga's being distracted by the dinosaur with the giant claws. Then the T-Rex gets it because the Giga's not focused on it and shoves it into the claws of the uh, that other dinosaur. I was like, oh, yay, T-Rex won, even though... It didn't really win because it only won when the opponent wasn't looking at it. Yeah, sorry, that I may be more irritated by that than most people, but that irritated me quite a bit. So yeah, this movie disappointed me. Like I said, there's some fun scenes, and even though it felt very contrived and didn't make sense of how all the original cast was back it was still fun to see them i'll say that and there were some fun moments of the characters the old characters and new characters talking to each other and finally meeting that was good and even though i didn't love the plot line with the clone girl that actress gave a good performance so it wasn't like i was bored watching it because like the performances are good i can watch it i just didn't care for that storyline i was hoping for a storyline that more focus on dinosaurs especially now that they're out in the in the world and the trailers made it feel like it was okay dinosaurs are here it's gonna it may lead to the extinction of humans because we're no longer top of the food chain and it's going to screw up the rest of the food chain and the ecosystem but now they don't really fix that and then the way they sort of wrap this movie up it's like oh these dinosaurs are going to live in the sanctuary be fine we see three t-rexes which is cool i was like when did they make these other t-rexes i thought there was only the one but whatever and I'm like, so are they going to put the rest of the dinosaurs in this sanctuary? Because they're all around the world. Not all of them are here. And it's like, are they going to have the sanctuary closed off so they can't leave or whatever? But so they just sort of quickly wrap it up. And it's like, okay, then that, that's it is what it is. So, yeah. That's sort of my spoilery thoughts of this movie. Like I said, I was very disappointed. I don't absolutely despise this movie by any means. I still stick to my rating from my non-spoiler view of 50%. And there, there's some fun scenes. There's some good action scenes. There's some suspenseful scenes, which is what I like in a Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movie. So, and I do know there are a lot of people who actually are liking or even loving this movie. So if you are one of those people, please let me know in the comments why you like it. And what is it that really worked for you in this movie? I guess that's sort of the same thing. Sorry, i have just trying to go in one take right now because my throat's been a little sore lately, so I'm just trying to get this done instead of taking multiple takes. So you have to forgive me for that. But yeah, guys, please let me know in the comments what you thought of this movie. Like I said, please keep comments respectful to other people. Let's get a nice conversation going of why you didn't like this movie or why you did. I'd love to know what you guys think. And if you're new here, again, please like this video and subscribe to my, my channel. I'm trying to grow a nice community of people here to talk about movies. So if you subscribe, it would be helpful to grow that community. So until next time, I'm going to actually be starting another countdown of the James Bond movies. I'm be starting with Dr. No, going all the way to No Time to Die. I hope to have that video up 
either Wednesday or Friday. It'll depend on how I'm feeling and whatnot. But I'm going to be alternating between a Bond movie and another movie and just going back and forth until all the Bond movies are done. So to be starting with Dr. Nelson, so stay tuned for that. And I'm hoping to see Lightyear this weekend too, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint me the way this one did. So stay tuned for that review too. So until then, take care everybody.